Hey everyone, Zach here with Action VFX, and today we are taking a look at our free shader for Blender, and it is for VDBs, so it includes everything from smoke plumes to meteors, gas explosions, so pyro and just regular volumetrics. It can be used across the board, and these are some of the results that you can get with it. This is using the Action VFX VDB assets from the 3D library. So be sure to check them out. In this product, you also get free sample VDBs to try it out with. So you can check out the results yourself using a gas explosion, a meteor, and a smoke plume from the Action VFX 3D library. I want to give a special shout out to Resilient Picture Company who created this shader and worked with us so that we could give it away for free. So big thank you to him. We'll be launching brand new tutorials soon that cover this and other additional software, but today we're getting started with Blender. So let's jump on in and check this out. All right, first things first, up here at the top, we're going to make sure that we have our viewport shading turned on. If it comes in looking like this when you first open your project, you're simply going to go up to the top right, click on viewport shading, and our render will start. All right, let's check out what we can do with this shader. First, we have our gas explosion VDB right here that you can see. And if we go to the asset and the VDB, we'll see where we can link this to any VDB. So if we wanted to open up a new asset, we could choose anything here and you can link a full animated VDB from Action VFX. And if you do that, you're just simply going to click on sequence set the um, number of frames the start frame will be one and that way you can have a fully animated vdb linked right in here to this shader but for our purposes we don't need the sequence so we're just going to leave it with one single frame if you look up here you'll see the channels that you're getting with the vdb in this gas explosion we have density heat scatter and temperature Today, we're only going to be using density, scatter, and temperature, but heat is there if you want to play around to get different effects. If I go, say, to our meteor, we have density, scatter, and temperature, and our smoke plume, because it has no pyro, is only going to have the density channel. So back up to our gas explosion, let's go and check out the shader. Starting over at the far left, you're going to have your inputs for your channels. So we have density, we have temperature and we have scatter, but here's where you could change any of those channels. If you were to have a VDB say that you created yourself or that you received elsewhere, you can also use this with those VDBs. All right, let's look at our density first. So up here at the top, we have our density and we are using this to control how dense the smoke is, how dense the volume is in general. So you can see that if I, lower this to say 200 we start getting a brighter element because the smoke is not blocking as much light and if i go on down to say 10 we really get a much brighter element and you can see that around the edges we get thinner smoke you can see this is a lighter color it's letting more light go through but we're still getting some areas where there's a lot of density those are still dark so I could go up above what it was around 500 at first. So if we go up to 800, we start getting even more dense smoke, blocking more light, and the darks become darker. I'm going to put it back around 500 where we had it. And next we'll look at the other aspect of the density, which is the color. So over here in our volume shader, if we just go over to the material on the right here, we'll see a color attribute under volume. If we click on that, then we can have full control over the color of the smoke. So if I go down to very dark, then it basically is absorbing all the light and we're not getting any reflection off of that. If we go back up to a brighter, we start to get more reflection from the sky and everything, and it starts to actually catch light and bounce that color back thus giving us the appearance of a lighter smoke. Next, we have the temperature. For the temperature, we're basically controlling how hot the explosion is. 
and we can see if we follow this line, we're plugging that into emission strength. So in the end, this is driving how much light is being emitted from the explosion. I'm going to turn on our smoke plume here so that we can see how it interacts with other objects. So we can see that we're actually getting light cast onto the smoke plume here. If I increase this value to say 50, our explosion is going to become hotter and we're getting more light cast onto these other objects. So if you wanted to have this casting light on surrounding buildings or other elements, then you can increase this value and it's going to increase how much of that emissive strength we have. I'm going to put it back down to 18 where I had it before. And we're going to move on down to our scatter. Now our scatter is what's really driving the overall look of the explosion, the colors here, and that is all going into emission color. So we have our scatter channel coming through here. We have the first value here, which is basically pushing the colors of the explosion either further towards the left or towards the right of our color ramp. So if I go down to say 100, it pushes everything over more to the left and we can see it looks less hot. The center becomes more of a yellow rather than a bright white. And if we were to push it up to say a thousand, it's going to push everything over more to the right of this color ramp. You can see we have less saturation because we have less saturation over here on the right side of our color ramp and we have much brighter whites and it actually becomes desaturated because of this very top color here. And that is because it is completely desaturated. So that's why we're seeing those desaturated colors right there. So I'm going to put this back to where we had it and back to our original look. All right, next we have our Fresnel here. So this is being multiplied with our scatter pass to give us this nice fall off from the center going outwards in the explosion. I'm going to turn back our, I'm going to turn our smoke plume back off here and let's look at what this does because this will give you some more creative freedom over the look of your explosion. You're going to make very small adjustments, but if I'll go down to 1.3, you can see how we just start getting a different look to things. So you can customize this and give yourself the, the look you want with that Fresnel and how it makes the fire and the fall off behave differently with that scatter pass. I'm going to put it back to 1.4 and we're going to move over here lastly to our color ramp. Our color ramp is where we can really drive the look of all the colors in our explosion. So you can see down here at the bottom, we have black, goes into a deep red, a desaturated orange, and then a gray color at the top. If we were to drag down this desaturated orange, then the distance between those two color changes becomes wider and we can see that fall off, how that changes the look of the explosion. It basically makes that hot center appear to come out of the explosion even more. And then lastly, we can slide this guy around here, which is our darker fire color as the heat dissipates. And we can get a much more saturated orange look by pulling that over to the right. And stylistically, we're just getting different looks by changing those values. You could even change this if you wanted something sci-fi. You could pull this around to a blue and you can get some really cool looks. You can see you'll start to get some pretty wild looks when you change these values around. All right, let's take a look at our meteor. Let's turn this guy on. And here's our meteor asset from the Action VFX library, where we're going to be able to see a little bit different uh, results with how this will affect the fall off of like the density and things, because this works a little bit different than the explosion where we're drawing a long trail and our smoke starts to dissipate 
in the back. So just wanted to show how the density can really affect the appearance of this. And it just shows really well, if we start lowering that value of density, you can see we get a much thinner smoke here. Now, like I said, the lower the density, the more light it's letting through. So if we wanted that thin smoke look, but this was getting too hot, then we would simply come down here to these adjustments, like we could lower the emissive strength of that, and that's going to start driving that down. It's also going to let off less light that way. Or if we just want to adjust more on the color side, then we can come down and adjust this value here and basically lower that exposure by bringing, further, bringing our values further to the left on this color ramp. So now we've got a nice thinner smoke up here at the top, but we're still retaining all that nice color detail in our fire of our meteor. All right, great. So let's check out our smoke plume last because it only has the density channel. So the smoke plume is very simple. We don't really have anything plugged in here because we're just working with density and color. So we're able to just simply use the color to control how the light is reflected. So if we want it to appear lighter, then we can drive that color up. If we wanted to add color to the smoke, we could easily do that just by adjusting that color attribute. And then we have our density, which just as the density worked with the meteor, we're going to lower that to get a thinner smoke. And this could be something like a very thin smoke out of a chimney, or we can increase the density to get a really strong, dark billowing smoke, like what you'd get from a large gas fire. And the great thing about these 3D VDBs is when you buy the full version, it is animated. So this smoke starts out at the bottom and rises and drifts off with the wind. And you have really great full 3D control over this, unlike 2D stock footage. So that's a great aspect of these 3D VDBs. All right, thank you so much for watching this, and I hope this is helpful to you. I hope that this free shader gives you more control and a great photo reel look with your VDB assets. Be sure to check out the 3D library on actionvfx.com. And be on the lookout for the new tutorials that will be coming for other software and other render engines soon. Again, this is Zach from Action VFX, and thank you so much for watching.